this is about as far into the bowels of the vessel as you can get. Uh, we're down here in what we call the forward void space. Uh, the primary uh, purpose of this area was just to act as a watertight enclosure so uh, if the boat was breached or hold, uh, it would float the vessel. And uh, down here you can see some of the uh, original structure that uh, was here, built in 1911. But um, most of the boat, probably 60% of it, has been like a 100 year old axe, three new heads and four new handles. The planking itself, which was done here, was uh, done with Oregon or softwood planking. The boat was only intended to last about 20 years. It's surprising that it did last 68 in service, but uh, that was because it had two major rebuilds during its life. The other feature down here is the bulkheads behind you there on the uh, yeah. back. These bulkheads would probably have been original to the vessel as well. They were part of the watertight structure, fastened to the hull and to the decks. And as I say, they were designed to stop uh, water from moving from one compartment to the other. So, uh, when the boat was rebuilt down here, over 170 ribs were installed in the vessel by John Setry and uh, his workers. And uh, all the white planking you see up there is new Oregon, which was obtained from a building site in northern New South Wales. The vessel was rebuilt twice during its uh, working life. Uh, a lot of new frames were added, but most of the framing that was put in here was done by the volunteers when the vessel was rebuilt down here after it arrived before it could be moved from the uh, location in the sand to the present location. They had to replace probably about 60% of the ribs and also the timbers. So what they did was they paired up, they laminated ribs, uh, which were steamed and uh, driven in here by John Setry and the other volunteers, and uh, these were fastened to new planking. What you can see here at the moment is what is left of the bilge piping. Uh, because this was a work boat, it wasn't uh, done with copper or brass fittings, it was all done with steel. So a lot of it had rusted out. By the time I uh, came on board here, a lot of this down in this area was just a pile of rust and could not be preserved. So what we have to do if we're going to recreate this is we have to do it in plastic. Now the stanchions you see in front of you there, we also found that they were starting to rust out badly and uh, this whole area could have collapsed if we weren't careful. Okay, we're now in the engine room of the vessel. What you can see here is the remains of the last diesel engine that was fitted to this. This was a Crosley engine, four-cylinder, approximately 400 horsepower. It only ran at uh, 400 revolutions a minute and it was direct reversing. Uh, this is the engineer's station. This is where the engineer would normally have been situated when the vessel was operating. And the reason for him being on deck was that he needed to work with the deckhand uh, when the vessel went alongside a wharf. It was not possible for the master to see what was going on down below. So most of the manoeuvring was done between the deckhand, who got a uh, spring line onto a wharf or a bollard, and the engineer, who then moved the engine ahead or astern. So quite often there's a conflict between conservation and restoration, so uh, knowing what to conserve and uh, what to actually replace is, is one of the big debates. Thanks very much, Bob.